Hello and welcome to The Wire. I'm Shravasti Das Gupta. Today we are being joined by author Punilan, who's a Sahitya Academy Award winning author. And today he's here with us with the English translation of his first novel. Now his first novel, Karisal, was published in 1976. But today his translation in English is being brought to us by his granddaughter, J. Priyadarshini. Thank you, Mr. Punilan, for joining us here on The Wire. Just to give our viewers a sense of what Karisal and now Black Soil is about, it's the story of a young man, Kanapan, who is uh, sent to the Black Soil region in Tamil Nadu as a, as a school teacher. And here he acquaints with the farmers, the rural landscape uh, over there, and he observes rural life and he sees that caste prejudice is widespread. He gets acquainted with these farmers and local um, people over there and builds a life around them and in a sense unionizes them and organizes them to protest against the oppressive upper caste landlord. So Mr. Ponelin, first off I want to ask you that you have worked as an education officer um, in Tamil Nadu in, in the 1960s when you started researching this book. How much of this book is drawn from your own experiences? Fully, 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 fully. The book is drawn from my own experience. If you could give us a sense of what you observed as an education officer in that black soil region over there and, and how you drew on those experiences for the book. Just to give some examples on, on how you were inspired to write this book. Uh, I was I was transferred but I was working in Kanyakumari district a fertile area. Then after four years I joined duty as a teacher, as a as an uh, assistant education officer when I was twenty two years old, very young. Okay. And from there I was transferred to Nagalapuram area. That was a barren area. I was transferred and people, my friends told me, don't go there. You can, you cannot get drinking water. Mm -hmm. But somehow I wanted to live the life there. Oh, so many people are living there. Why can't I? And I went there. I went there. I met the people. And I, as an officer, education officer, assistant education officer, I used to visit schools. Hmm. Uh, uh, but the schools were scattered. I had to walk 25 to 30 kilometers daily to visit that schools. Hmm. Otherwise, teachers will go and the children will go. School will be closed always. So, I used to go daily. After the evening, after when the evening, I won't return to my office. But it, it was difficult. Some 25 kilometers, I had to again walk. So, I stayed in the huts of landlords. And along with uh, cattle, they they provided with they provided with the cot, a fan and all these things. They because of their generosity, I they, they gave it, and I I was there. They f gave me food also, hmm. their food. Hmm. And, uh, when I was born, as 24, 25, till I was 25, 24, 25. I was a strict vegetarian. My family was a vegetarian family. But there, no vegetarian food. So, whatever they give, I take. So, a lot of this book is, is from the viewpoint of this school teacher who is visiting this black soil region where the weather is very harsh, very treacherous heat, as well as it's, it's a rain dependent area. <laughs> completely rain fed and the people's lives as well as livelihoods are dependent on the rain. So how, how did you see, observe this as an education officer over there when you were acquainting with the people, the, the harsh conditions in which they live? 
How did that influence you? The, 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 I, I daily visited schools. And in the evening, I could not return to my office. Hmm. So, only two or three days I will visit my office. Other days, I will be there in the cattle shed of some landlord. And because I was having moustache and all these things, I was, I, 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 I was there, there were black people. And I was, at that time, I was somewhat uh, fascinated to those people. And every day they gave a cot, some fan, food, all these things in the evening. I, I would take of them and be with them. And till 2 o'clock, we talked, talked, talked. Okay. So these conversations obviously must have informed your uh, research when you were writing yes, this book. Yes, that is that that the that, 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 uh, the 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 information they gave. Hmm. I when at, at about one o'clock at night, when they all went for sleep, I would sit and write everything. Oh. Whatever I heard, I write. I wrote. And there was, when, whenever there was the doubt, I, next, the next day, I would ask the people, huh? what was the reason for that? What was the reason for that? And I would ask them. They will answer. And we became friends, not officers. Mm -hmm. We became friends, very good friends. Whenever I, 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 I was in the Nagalavaram office, I, I had a separate room for those people, that farmers, they would come, they would wash their face and everything, and came, come to me in the stairs, upstairs. Upstairs, I would be in my, in my office. And those people, I will give only a cup of tea. Every, anybody who come, came, I would give a cup of tea and one vada. And <coughs> They were greatly amazed. Oh, here is a man. He is an officer, but he treats us as brothers. Mm -hmm. And they, 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 they said, they told me all the things about the village. Uh, it's interesting that you are mentioning this, that they treated you as, as brothers and you had developed a brotherhood in a sense with the people over there. What is an important part of this book is the caste prejudice that, that is prevalent in that area and this book really explores the inequalities in those villages and at the heart of this book is of course the idea of caste conflict between this oppressive upper caste landlord and lower caste agricultural laborers and farmers who are who in a sense agitate against him but they are also oppressed till the school teacher kind of comes and manages to give them some strength and support and and uh, unionizes them in a sense so now that 50 odd years have passed since this book um, first came out do you see any difference in the india of today in terms of ah, caste struggle that, 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 that when i began to write the book, it was the 1950s. India began independent and there was the, the, the agrarian revolution started. Mm. This, uh, uh, this uh, uh, ploughing people, they wanted land for themselves. They, uh, they joined as groups. This started. Mm. And I was going there. Somehow, I was fascinated by the by the people. So much love and affection for the this, this uh, land, this people, and everything. They they attracted me. Mm. So I began to make friends with them, and that friendship gave so much valuable instruction in, in, in instruction from them i gave i, I gave, got so many things from them one, one, one boy who is six years old getting married to a girl 
who is 22, 22 or 25 years old and such paradox which I never knew I never knew that these things happen in Tamil Nadu. Mm. Karpu, Karpu, chastity. They say, but this happens. And I began to write. Mm. One day I went to a school. I, 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 I was never an officer there. I used to go. And I went to a village. A, a, a village. And the woman of that village was uh, preparing porridge for their children. And, and I had asked the master of that school, uh, two boys were missing. Uh, please come with me. We can go and ask the, ma and the mother, why? And we, we, we went there. The first question I asked her, Ramasamy and Govindasamy were not present. Hmm. Why? Why did they go? Why did they come? She said, Sir, Govindasamy was my real son. The, my, my, my husband, husband was Krishna uh, uh, some some word, some, some, some name, name, but my other son was not his son. He was born to another man from another caste and he is also with me. Okay. I was stuck with Vanda. And I, I began to write everything. Daily I began to write. What is also interesting in this book, apart from these uh, very interesting customs and traditions that we don't hear about and perhaps it's not as, uh, written about as widely as it should be. The other part why this book is so important is because it's coming close to 50 years since it was first written and what's important is that it reminds view, uh, readers about the Kevan Money massacre that took place in the 1960s, end of 1960s and 1968 when just to give our viewers an idea, 44 agricultural Dalit labourers were charred to death inside a hut by an upper caste landlord. Yeah, this is in Thanjavur district and um, so a reference to that is also there in this book it tries to draw upon that yes. now that you see um, it's been so many years do you observe a change in terms of the atrocities and the caste based violence in India slowly changes coming slowly changes but still there in so many places this this rotten things happen hmm. Do you think enough has been done in the last five decades to mitigate caste-based violence in India? Do you see any change in that regard? Or do you think we need to do a lot more? I am, Sincerely, I feel I, we have to do a lot more. Because the people are so depressed, so poverty-stricken, and they are so hungry, all these things. But the government is also some doing something. That's not enough. Mm. Ye, ye, any change, if brought only by governments, cannot change the country. It must there there must be cooperation between the people and the society. Mm. That I. I impressed up in the novel. Hmm. That's very interesting that you are mentioning that there must be cooperation between the people and the government in order to bring about any kind of change. I am an Indian. Hmm. I am a Tamilian. Hmm. I am born, bred and I am living here. I must have, I must have, I should not, should not, should not I have that feeling that my country must be, my, my state must be very Beautiful, correct, genuine and all these things. 
so what is also interesting in this book is that it draws on a lot of socialist themes and um, some critics would argue that in the decades since this book was written there has been the fall of the soviet union and the relevance of socialist ideas in 2023 how, how do you see this i i i through the people through the people the the workers the peasants i was informed that we are getting ready for a revolution we are getting ready for a change we are get organizing in this village we have organized in that village we have organized in that village we will be organizing in one month and they said not think any writer cannot trust his ideas to the people it won't it won't be attractive but genuine genuine support i i i i i got from the people mm. they said you write this you write it it's interesting that you mentioned this also because um finally i want coming to my last question is that you were talking about how the people told you about their experiences and you drew upon that to write uh, this book so finally i want to ask you how do you see the role of literature in organizing people in in building people's consciousness how do you see the role of literature today i sincerely feel literature will literature is the only source the primary source which will change the consciousness of the people it will certainly change the consciousness of the people to for a better life mm. but 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 as teachers as I, I i was not not really a teacher but as a teacher what is my duty to bring that consciousness what is the duty of book to bring that consciousness everything depends upon our teachers work so i did it that's very interesting mr ponal and that you say that the role of literature is the most important in building people's consciousness and of course the role of teachers in our society is immense and how they build our ideas and our conscience that's also very important and these are themes uh, that you will find in this book black soil which has been as we mentioned earlier which has been translated by mr punilan's granddaughter j priyadarshini and uh, the book is now out and you can grab a copy of that and now that the book is available in english it's also available to a much ah. wider audience and we hope that more and more people will read this book and uh, uh, join this amazing uh, world that you have created in Karisal Black Soil. Congratulations on that, Mr. Ponilan, and thank you so much for joining us here on The Wire. Thank you. I am also thankful to you for asking so many questions, very, very emotionally and recording everything. Thank you. <laughs> thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So thank you. To receive instant updates on all videos from The Wire, click the subscribe button and hit the bell icon. Pay to support independent journalism. Click the link in the description and choose the amount you want to pay.